Proverbs 2, 1 and 5. My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Uh, many have misused the word of God to just fulfill their own heart's desires and not really glorify God in his word. I'm reminded that uh, there is a reason why uh, God told us that we needed, we needed to be born again. But I just really wanted to read uh, from Galatians 2.20 which really says a lot. I mean, there is one part in this scripture that really says a lot about, about the, the believer. Uh, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. Uh, so it is no longer I uh, who live. Uh, so that particular statement spoke uh, uh, very, very, uh, I mean, it spoke, it spoke validity to me because I realized that I, <laughs> if I've been crucified with Christ, I, I have a new life, I have a new identity. And that identity is in Christ. But if I have that identity in Christ, the second statement now tells me that, but, uh, but Christ lives in me. And so if Christ lives in me, I must allow him to do his work. Uh, which means that if I study the life of Jesus Christ, he wasn't shy about calling evil in his face. He wasn't shy about calling people to repentance. He wasn't shy about exposing uh, wickedness on, on the earth. He did not stop from doing all these things. And so if, if I be a, a vessel to his honor, I must not be afraid to speak these things because then I know that it's not really I who is living, meaning doing what I would like to do in my flesh. It is now Christ that is living through me. And so whatever he tells me to say, however he asks me to move, whomever he asks me to speak to, I must say it believing that it is Christ who is living in and through me, meaning that that old life must be gone. It is no longer I that live, but it is Christ that lives in me and through me to fulfill his purposes on the earth. And so now if you believe, I, I believe that if I believe that I am that new creation in Christ, I know that every desire has been shaped by, by him. Uh, every action is being ordained by God. Uh, if I remain in him. So, um, you know, uh, uh, I, I was having a conversation with uh, my dear mother uh, um, and, you know, she said something uh, very paramount that people no longer, you know, really gravitate to watch hard teachings, teaching that tells you that you're sinned and you need to repent. Uh, because uh, as she just mentioned today, people want to, uh, 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 people want that feel good message. But I, I find those who tell me the truth for the face value to be very cherishable for me because I know that they really love me. And if they love me, they'll tell me the truth in love. So, um, yes, uh, this is pretty much what really touched me today um, to remember that it is Christ that is living in and through me. And that every time my flesh comes up and resurfaces, the old man resurfaces, <laughs> then I'm no longer walking in Christ. But if I am in Christ, I, should, I am in a place of safety. That means I must speak what he has told me to, to say without fear of what people would, uh, without fear of how people would react to it. Amen. Amen. And Terrence, I think uh, what you said was so very important. Amen. In when you started and you said that it is about that place begins with dying to self first. And unfortunately, we live in a culture and a day and time where most people don't want to die to self. And because they don't want to die to self, they are convinced that their selfish, soulish ways, they now attribute it to Christ. He understands or Christ did the same thing. Amen. You know, that's why they allude to this, that he is okay with these perverted lifestyles attitudes and beliefs. Amen. But we must have the wisdom because just think about it. If someone was to come on uh, this platform and they told us, you know, well, I woke up this morning and I am convinced that I was born to be an adulteress and I'm just an adulteress and I can't help but be an adulteress and I'm an adulteress. I'm a we say, what in the world, brother, sister is wrong with you? But amen. We would still tell them that is not of God. Amen. Uh, so all of us have 
these things that we need to die to self, because that's what the Bible says, that deny yourself. God, give me the wisdom to be able to deny myself, because this world speaks to this flesh of mine and tries to convince my flesh, because I don't want it to die, and it don't want to die, that it's okay. Deny myself, then die to self, pick up your cross and follow him. And that's the truth of the word. And anything other than that is not going to occur because why? This flesh is alive and well, and it is really easy for it to be resurrected from the dead. That's why the Bible tells us it must die daily. We must die daily. We can't die 12 years ago, and that's going to keep me forever and ever. It is a daily denying. It is a daily death. It is a daily picking up our cross and following him. And it takes the wisdom, the wisdom of God in order to be able to do that because our flesh is receptive to the things of this world. We were born with a sinful nature. It responds, amen, outside of Christ and outside of the wisdom that tells me, regardless of if 99 people say it's okay, the wisdom of God will speak to you and I and say, that's not okay. I don't care if everybody and their brother is doing it. That is not of me. It's not okay. No is your response. Walk away. In fact, don't just walk. Run. Run. Amen. I'm really seeing and understand now, uh, again, why it's so important that we read the word. Because as we are hearing all these messages that are going around, that people are taking bits and pieces of the word and twisting it to make it, it sound because we've gotten so far away from God, they've got to twist the word in order to try to justify what they're doing. And um, so it's, I, I, I see, uh, again, the, you know, how important it is to know the word of God, not just to read it, not just to go through it surfacely and read it, but to really dig into it and know the meanings, because, um, you know, we're going to have to stand up and begin to speak against this, and we can't speak against it if we don't know what we're talking about. Amen. And it is the time to stand. It's not just subtle things anymore. It's become blatant. And therefore, we must pray, God, give me your wisdom. And even as you're reading the word, show me the wisdom that you desire that I may walk in it and live it. I need your wisdom. I need your wisdom. This is as necessary as breathing because it is it's everywhere it's everywhere if it was outside of the church it would be one thing but it's everything and it comes in subtly and if we don't have the wisdom to discern it before long yeah, before it's too late it's like a fish in the water the bait appeals to it and they bite the hook and the next thing you know they're being reeled in we're going to go ahead and transition into um, our time of participating in the communion together. Amen. What I want us to do is, uh, again, just take some time and really just examine yourself. You know, if there's anything in you that does not line up with God, or maybe even that propensity to reject the truth of God's word. You know, that's not true. How can that be, you know? Because you believe that you know that you know. When God is telling us based on his word uh, and the scripture is there, we need to come. Because how can two walk together unless they agree? And he's not just talking about you and me. He's talking about him and us. You cannot walk with God and not agree with God. So God just search us right now. And if there's anything in us that is rebelling or rejecting against sound teaching, sound doctrine, your word, Lord God, your truth, and we have allowed the life of the enemy and the things of this world to supersede your truth. And will you reveal that to us right now, Holy Spirit? 
because we don't want to take the communion table uh, lightly. It's not a afterthought. It's not a bad product. It is a main event because you, Lord Jesus, died. You sacrificed. You who knew no sin became sin for us so that we could be free from the bondage of sin, that we could be free from the wages and the penalty of sin, which is death. Because God, you are still the God of capital punishment. We've changed, but you have not. So God, will you spot and highlight the things that we have become like the world and we've conformed instead of standing firm in who you are. So that as we partake, as we re commit, rededicate ourselves to you. And this awesome covenant that we have with you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the blood of the lamb, that we can do so and know that we are in and right standing in mind and body and spirit. Search us, Lord God. But we heed the warnings that the apostle Paul gave us when he said that there were many that were sick and sleep. But if we would examine ourselves and we would not have to receive those kinds of things, but we know that it is a privilege and an honor to be able to partake in Holy Communion, to be able to be in covenant with you, the Lord our God. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Ooh, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Again, if there is any that feel like I just need, maybe I need some more time and I need to really make sure that I get some things right because the Holy Spirit has identified those things to you. Your cameras are off. So you be led by the Spirit, amen. Because again, this is not just some thing that we do. It's not just some ritual. It's not something that we participate in the first Sunday of the month or because someone says, but it is because it is partaking of the body and of the blood of the lamb, the sacrificial lamb that was crucified, died, buried, and on the third day, he rose again, remembering that he did that for us. And that's why he said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. As this is symbolizing again the body of Christ and the blood of Christ that was broken and it was shed for you and I. But Paul said it this way he said, on that same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, he took the bread and he gave thanks. And after he gave thanks, he broke it. Father, we thank you for the body of the lamb. We thank you for your son that you gave for us. We thank you that he, though he despised the cross, though he despised the shame, he endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. And what was that joy? That we would be reconciled, we would be redeemed, and we would be able to be partakers in this communion table. So we thank you, Lord God. We thank you that you have searched us, you have examined us with a clear heart and with a clear spirit. We are able to take so I want you to take the bread right now and eat.
And after they had supped, he took the cup. And after again, giving thanks to God, the Bible says that in everything we do, we have to give thanks unto God and do it in the name of Jesus. So again, Lord, we thank you for the blood of the Lamb that washes us white as snow. We thank you, Lord God, that we have been forgiven of our sins and you have placed them in the sea of forgetfulness. And again, we thank you. And we do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ and the finished work on the cross. We thank you that every day we can commune with you and every day we can give thanks. Then he took the cup and after giving thanks, he said, take for this is my blood. This is the blood that was poured out for you and I. Take and drink. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you for Christ's body that was broken for us. We thank you, Lord God, for all that it represents and all that it means. We thank you that even when he was still alive, he said, unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you have no part of me. We thank you that you have enabled us to take part, to participate. We thank you again for that blood that is crimson red and washes us white as snow. We do not take this lightly because we know that you are the one that made it all possible. You devised a plan and you, Lord Jesus, willingly submitted to the plan of the Father and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you were able to do it all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We praise you and we bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Uh, Praise amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank Praise you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.